<laughs> All right. Are you looking at me or looking at the camera? All right, we've got a new project here in the shop. This is a late 70s Bridgeport Series 1 mill. Uh, this one came equipped with uh, CNC controls, but they're a little dated, so we're gonna update it. So the cool thing about these things, they were made in the late 70s. They have these reel-to-reel -reel, uh, readers, so you put, you put tape in it, and it's supposed to run the machine off of that. Obviously, uh, in the year 2020, as messed up as things are these days, we're, we're not going to run off of that, you know. It's just, it's just not going to happen. So there's these two big boxes on the back. This guy here and the one back there. Today, we can replace these big cabinets with like this. Just this. And a computer and a VFD, right? Yep. Can you explain a VFD? Variable frequency drive. Just changes your hertz from uh, zero to whatever usually up to 200 hertz yeah pretty much that we'll explain what a vfd is later uh first thing we need to do is get these cabinets off of here this thing is massive so i'm just going to do away with this the uh the box on the back is a little more sensible so i'm going to move it around to the side and i think everything is going to fit in that cabinet and then some so it'll be good ventilation plenty of room to work with good for wire organization and whatever so first order of business tear off these cabinets and strip them of everything we don't need and then put everything back in there that we do need including the new stuff So it looks like this is the control cabinet. This is where everything, all the all the logic was being done behind the scenes to tell the machine what to do. We've got the drivers over here on the board for the uh, for the stepper motors. This is where the reel to reel player was, but we already took that out. So modern day electronics, basically all of this stuff is gonna be replaced by this breakout board, which helps the computer communicate with the stepper drivers, which then communicate with the motor. So you just need three of these, this little board, a computer, and you can run this machine. And a power supply, of course. We've come a long way in 40 years. This cabin is where all the power was converted from what was coming out of the wall to what those other boards needed for operation. And all these transformers change the voltage. And all this is gonna be replaced by this power supply and maybe a couple other ones that get different voltages. This one's 48 volts to power the steppers and I'll probably have a 12 volt one to power some other miscellaneous electronics and then a reducer to bring it down to five volts to power the board. So next step in this build, uh, we're just gonna take the electronics, hook them up to the motors that are still on the machine and try and get some motion out of it. And then uh, at that point we can make sure everything works and then rip everything out of this cabinet and install the new stuff in this cabinet and then attach it to the uh, side of the mill again.
no, we're good. Oh yeah. Well, so as it turns out, you can teach an old dog new tricks. Luckily, we didn't run into any problems with the board that I threw together. I just put it in the box, hooked all the wires up, and she ran. So uh, there's still a couple things left to do. We haven't hooked up the limit switches. Uh, but we're gonna do that in a future video. And I also like to add a little arm that comes off with a screen and a keyboard off to the side. And I'm gonna build an enclosure to try and keep all these chips in here, because it does like to throw a lot of chips, and I'd like to keep the shop a little clean if I can. So that'll be a topic of a future video on this machine. I'm thinking about making another video, kind of explaining a little more in detail how we built the board and all the components on it. If you have any interest in a video like that, just leave a comment below and I'll, I'll go look into making that video. Retrofitting one of these machines is actually really easy compared to retrofitting a non-CNC machine. So if you're looking to do a CNC conversion on a knee mill, this is the way to go if you can find one of these. Luckily, there's quite a few of these kind of still sitting around and people don't really want to mess with them because they had those old reel to reel readers and you can get them for pretty cheap. And this is a real capable machine even as it sits before I add a little more functionality to it. But uh, I definitely see a couple upgrades going into this thing if we use it more often just to make it a little easier. Uh, something to control the VFD from the panel, some speed controllers, uh, things to read the RPMs and kind of help the automation process a little bit more. So anyways, I think that wraps up this video. Thank you for watching. Definitely check back and look for other videos for this series as we make changes to this machine and use this machine to make other things for other projects. So I'll see you on the next video. The cool thing about these things, they came in uh, 